All right, on the bench today, uh, ZF5 HP24 four-wheel drive out of a 2002 BMW X5. And this car belongs to Mr. Brad, who towed it to me from Westchester County due to the transmission slipping. So when the car first got here, we drove it around, really didn't feel too much. But we did a code scan, you know, through the uh, snap-on scanner. We scanned all the modules in the system. And the transmission had a couple of codes, okay? The transmission had code 49, gear monitoring, which is a fancy term for your transmission is slipping. Uh, code 53, gear monitoring three, which uh, again means the transmission slipping in third. <clears throat> and a 59, stall monitoring. And what stall monitoring means is the computer sees the transmission slipping on the pull-away. So, and that's exactly what we felt. I drove the car around, didn't really feel much. And then as we were moving cars, jockeying cars around in the morning from the backyard to the front yard, we backed it out of the backyard, put it in drive. It slipped real bad uh, between the backyard and the front yard like twice. So we know something's going on on the pull-away. And as you know, a typical problem with these 5 HP 24s is possible blown A drum uh, due to a worn pressure regulator valve bore, which creates uh, pressure spikes. Also, it has that uh, skinny O-ring that seals the A clutch. And if that O-ring is torn, it creates a leak it, and you can lose your applied pressure there as well. So I think we're gonna be seeing something <clears throat> between the A drum and possibly maybe something with that O-ring. But uh, I didn't feel it, but the manager drove it around and he came to me, he said the thing 100% slipped on the pull away, it happened to him a few times. Okay, so we are going to open up this trans. I did uh, drain the fluid out. The fluid wasn't, you know, didn't look the greatest. Pan didn't look too bad. Um, so again, I'm thinking a drum problem or O-ring problem. Uh, so what we'll do is I'll get a little closer and we're gonna open this up and see what we find. Uh, all right, so let me get a little closer and we'll start the tear down. All right, so first thing we're gonna do here, I like to take the little lock off that holds the uh, solenoid uh, connector. All right, so that we're gonna slide right off. and easy. All right, the next thing I want to do is take this, this back adapter plate off uh, that, of course, the transfer case would go on. Now here, there is an O-ring around this, a small O-ring. And the reason why they have this O-ring here is to keep moisture out of the input shaft, between the input shaft of the transfer case and the output shaft of the trans, so it doesn't get all kinds of corrosion in there. All right, and that, I believe, is a 45. Shim. Shim was here, of course. All right, so here is that plate. You got an O-ring here. All right, so we can't get the park gear and the exciter ring that the output that the output speed sensor reads. Uh, that won't come out yet because we have to actually take the output speed sensor out. So this is going to be stuck in there for now. But I just wanted to get that adapter plate off. Here is the shim again. Let's see if we can, uh, we're going to take this bell housing off. Uh, 
That is a 17. It's got the short, the short and the long bolts. When I put, when I'm rebuilding this and I put these back on, these bolts and the short ones are uh, tightened to 34 foot pounds. So everything came out as one here. This under here. Actually, I'll get rid of this over here. Okay. Open that up. Look at the pump right there. Okay, so might as well take. I don't think we can. Better get the input speed since we're out first. Okay. Alright. Take the pan down or uh, torque 27s. I did have the pan off, as I said, to drain it. Okay. And a couple of strands there, but there is your pan. And I know he recently had just bought this car. So it looks, uh, looks like a uh, possible aftermarket filter. Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is a this is a aftermarket filter, but you know, of course, we're going to be going all the way back. I've told you many times of the horror stories using the after filters on these 5 HP 24s and really any ZF transmission, you really don't want to do that. All right, so I'm going to take the output speed sensor out. All right, got some crap on that. And then we're going to slide this out here. All right, now we're going to get the input speed. got some pieces on this uh, input speed sensor you know, on the magnet here. All right, now let's pull the valve body off. Also 27s. Okay, 
They're all T27s, but the bolts that come out have a larger surface area bolt head on it. Those how you know those are the ones that come out. Sometimes you gotta look. said you gotta look there it is So we'll take a look at this bell body after. Okay. All right, let me just reposition. We'll just take this apart and See if that is our problem. Okay, I'm gonna take the snap ring out. is intact and we got a torn seal right here so more than likely here is our slipping on the pull away but these mag you know these speed sensors a lot of crap on the speed sensors but there's our problem uh, drum is not drum seems to be intact but you know these drums this drum, regardless, is going to be changed because these drums can crack internally. I've had that happen to me. The drum looks fine, but it's still, it's still definitely going to be changed. Okay, so we have our torn O-ring. And this thing definitely was slipping on the pull-away. But we're going to go uh, look at all these frictions. It's 100% getting another drum. So this, uh, this bearing has an extremely high failure rate, so that bearing gets changed, and the race is in here in this hub, so we got to just kind of get a screwdriver in there and pop that race out, and this bearing is going to be changed also. It actually doesn't even, the race doesn't even feel good. And if you look at this bearing up close, a lot of times the bearing is pitted. 
But the race is all worn out. This race really is no, is no good. Okay. Okay, C clutch drum coming out. All right, this drum also is on in reverse. Okay, we've got two more rings, a couple of Teflon rings there. And you gotta make sure these bushings, there's two bushings in here, and you gotta make sure these bushings are nice and snug on the shaft that it rides on, or you will lose apply oil for the C-clutch, which would make this thing slip in reverse when it gets hot, only hot, not cold. Okay. All right, now, we gotta remove this feed pipe, we have to get this gasket out of here. Gotta remove this feed pipe. Okay, you know what, let me just put you guys on hold for one second, I'll be right back. And, I gotta reposition anyway. Okay, all right. I don't know if it came through or not, but when I took out the seat clutch, uh, we have a bearing here. I don't know if, if I was if this was in view I really couldn't see there's a bit of a glare on a little monitor on the camera, but um, The two bushings in here just again if you saw it, okay um, Got to make sure the bushings are okay in here uh, If they are worn out it would cause a reverse problem hot the C clutch comes on in reverse as well as the F clutch Okay now we got to pull out, we're going to get the center support out, but first we've got to take this pipe out that feeds the E-clutch, and I want to tell you something about that. Okay, so we've got a little bracket here. Take that out. See if I can actually get this feet pipe out of here. Okay, so this fits in here like this. All right, and sometimes what you gotta look out for on this E pipe is the valve body sits right on top. And if this pipe is sticking up a little bit, it can get a little damage, wear a hole in it right here. So that's just something you have to look out for. Um, I may be seeing it once, but you know, it's a, it doesn't really happen, but it can happen. So I just wanted to mention that. Just take a look at this, make sure there's no hole there. Okay, so that's the E-pipe for the E-clutch. Um, now we gotta get the springs out. Little snap rings here. Okay, there's one. Gonna get the other one. Two. And now let's see if we can get these seals out. Okay. There's one. This one's a little, little harder sometimes. Okay, it came right out. Okay, so this, this bolt, <coughs> what I use that fits right in there actually is a, is a, a bolt from a Honda. It has a, a thicker thread here and a thinner one here because this goes through the case and then a nut goes on this to hold a, a, hold a, a bracket on. So I, I use this to get those uh, seals out. Okay, so well that's part. <coughs> All right, now we got a snap ring. Okay, the snap ring actually is the same on both sides. All right, now we're gonna get 
this center support out. And this thing's going to be like perfectly straight. these uh, D clutches out. Don't look too bad, but we got banner kit. All right, let's try to get this thing straight. Oh, you know what? One of the locks had come out. pieces that keep the center support from turning. And pull them out. Okay, there we go. Here's the other one. Okay. E clutch here, we'll take a look at that. Okay, I'll wash it here. Line it set. it again with the output shift. I'm sorry, with the uh, intermediate shift. Okay, all right, now. Uh, we're gonna get all these T40 bolts out back here to get the F clutch out. Shocker. up a little bit sorry about that well I used uh, I use this to get these things loose to shock the uh, the bolts loose
All right, so we got one left. Let me just get it loose. one come in I'll uh, show you guys what I uh, uh, put in this all right so I'll be back in a few okay first we'll take a look at the F clutch drum all right so I'm gonna take this snap ring off here all right I can't get my finger in there so we'll get this in there. Here is a sprig, which I'm going to be looking at to make sure it's good, which they normally are. Um, I have come across these uh, sprigs being bad, which would make it, uh, you know, kind of maybe like a fallout drive uh, on takeoff, like neutralize it and go. You know, they don't look bad. They could be worn out, but they don't look too bad. And what I'll do before we sign off is I'll take this drum apart. We'll take a look at the F-clutch piston, which sometimes can um, <clears throat> debond and cause an issue in reverse. Okay. Take a look at the A-clutch. So if you have a problem on takeoff, slipping on takeoff, and it's good in reverse, you have no problem in reverse, pretty much you have an issue with your A drum, or A clutch circuit, I should say. It could be this O-ring, the drum crack. The drum's not cracked with that O-ring, but you know, again, these drums can crack internally, because I've seen that. All right, these clutches are burnt, the forward clutch or the A clutch. When you're putting, when you're putting this back together, you got to be very careful of these rings. You want to grease these rings up and use the trans gel because that melts. Grease these up real good because you can tear these very easily putting this back together. All right, we got the B. <clears throat> And if you have, uh, by chance, a blown A drum on these 5 HP 24s, you want to take a look at this clutch because a lot of times they got the metal pieces of metal embedded, and you're going to want to change those fixtures also. <clears throat> All right, so we saw the D. Let's take a look at the E. This was the this is the neutral switch uh, or the range switch for this transmission and these do along with the 5 HP 19s they have a pretty high failure rate but 
And until it's fade, you leave it alone. <clears throat> but it's easy enough to tell because you'll get a code for it, or if you put a scan tool on it, it may read the wrong gear. But that's pretty simple to tell um, if, uh, if that is no good. <clears throat> Take a look at the C clutch. No, C clutch isn't the greatest either. Same as the A clutch, by the way. Uh, definitely burnt there. Got some black uh, black rings around it. So these pump bolts, there's all of these, which is the same, which are the same. All right, I usually tighten these down maybe like 100 inch pounds. And then there's another one, which I do at about 70 inch pounds. And that's the one on the inside. <clears throat> all right, so. Later. Oh, here's a washer, by the way. That went here. And that gets here to where's the bearing? To this bearing. And it goes here. Okay, so this CL lineup dowel, take it out. Got the pump plate. Got the gears. Dots are facing me. It comes in normally pretty good. You know what normally happens if there is ever a problem is the lug nuts, get, the lug nuts, the uh, pump lugs um, get uh, torn, uh, broke, broken off. <clears throat> All right, so we got a bearing here instead of a bushing, but that looks real nice. stator back. We're going to take this off, which is going to house the flow control valve. And that is, should be, I believe, a 17. No, I think it's bigger than that. Yeah, I think it's a 19. <clears throat> Where is the 19? sits like that, and then the valve, and you want to make sure this is nice and free, which it always is, this thing gets stuck, uh, 
trains won't move or move very badly. <coughs> Flow control valve. <coughs> okay, so that's that. My machine heating up, wash up some of this stuff. All right, so let me get the valve body over here. Uh, take a look at that. And then I guess we can finish it up. The tear down, and then as the stuff comes in, I'll give you a shot of the of the new parts. I'm going to be getting like a new lower front half with the oversized valve in it. So, um, all right, just give me a few minutes once again, and I'll be back. Okay. All right. So I got this. I took the split ring out of this uh, F clutch drum, and I'll take the Belleville out. Take a look at the piston here. Okay, this piston uh, is in good shape. I have seen these with reverse problems when this, these things totally were debonded. But again, if you're changing this, I certainly, only way you should go in this is OE. Uh, I have had it once, or I have a video out on, uh, uh, I recently did on aftermarket parts and a guy doing one of these transmissions brought me the drum because he wanted me to swap out the piston. And these pistons, these OF clutch pistons, you can put in and push it right in. I mean, even when it's brand new, they go in that easy. He brought me a piston, I couldn't get the piston in. I had to work it around and get it in. And, and uh, it, it was an aftermarket piston. And um, I think if I remember correctly, it's about nine months before it started having reverse problems again. So uh, it's definitely not the way to go. I also have an O-ring around the outside of the drum here and all the uh, bolts, uh, 440 bolts. Those bolts, if need be, if the, you know, the inside gets damaged, uh, the bolts are available. If you do need them, uh, Ericsson's. Uh, does sell them. This right here is the sprig, and I got this side ring out a little bit of a pain, but I got it. All right, so that I'll take that, and then take the race out. Make sure the race is nice and no wear at all. It's perfect. Okay, and the sprig. This is what it looks like. All right, it is available. Get to check the rotation of the spray if you do take this out. Okay, that's that. All right, valve body again. So here's the input speed sensor, and we did a lot of crap on the input speed sensor. I thought that for sure that drum was going to be cracked or broken or something, but you know it also could be from that bearing. This bearing uh, isn't really the greatest. And again, this one here, which sits on, where is the C? Sits on the C drum. Always change this bearing. Always change it. That's a common one. Always goes big. All right, so this section is going to be changed uh, with uh, an oversized uh, valve that I get from Ericsson's. And another thing to check on the valve body is on the upper section casting. Sometimes from pressure you get a crack along here. You gotta look for it. And what that'll do is as you're coming to a stop, it may neutralize, drop out of speed, and go back in speed. <clears throat> Reverse normally would be okay, but it's right in the A circuit. Uh, I think the A circuit. Actually, I'm going to double check on that and get right back to you. But you got to look for a crack here. This one's okay. I've seen that, you know, half a dozen times out of all the ones I've done. All right, so just give me two seconds. I'll be right back. All right, so getting back to this valve body here. So this actually is the F-clutch uh, 
uh, circuit when you see the crack here. Now, again, the F-clutch is on in reverse. It's also on in park and neutral. But with this cracked here, um, in reverse, it doesn't affect it because the clutch is fed a different way. Um, but in drive, in first gear only, the F-clutch is and the A-clutch circuits are connected, so the loss of the pressure can cause the clutch to release, slip on a pull away, or fall out of speed when you come to a stop like it feels like it's low on fluid. Um, but again, it won't affect reverse at all because it's fed dip differently. So you want to look for a crack here as well. Uh, also on the earlier models, in this valve body, here and here there are dampers. Early ones can crack and cause some problems, uh, some slipping. And this A clutch, of course, houses the PR valve. The bore wears out, causes pressure spikes. So that's this always gets changed. The upper section always gets changed on the overhaul. Uh, okay, so let's look at this. We can take a look at this here. Let me just fix this. Down a little bit. There's a little plant set here. You take a look at. I gotta take it apart anyway to check. Right, so we got a ring gear. Play. Got a sun gear. All right, we got another snap ring. Okay, so this transmission is completely torn down, the ZF5 HP24 under the O2X5. And again, as the parts come in, um, I'll kind of show you what we're doing here. So this had a couple of codes again. The code, the stall monitoring code, I believe was 59. Uh, yes, 59 stall monitoring, which again, it sees a computer sees a slip on takeoff, which could be uh, very well this uh, you know torn o-ring here and again I've, I've seen these drums uh, crack internally also had a gear ratio error in third now in third the D clutch is on and the A clutch is still on so having a leak in the A circuit could possibly cause that code as well uh, the D clutch really doesn't look that bad but we're going to be um, you know changing all the seals and everything but the A clutch is on in first through fourth and comes off in fifth. So if you have a leak in that circuit, it's very possible it can cause uh, other, other issues with the other gears because the A clutch is on and only the D clutch is on. And that's about it for now. So as the parts start rolling in, I will um, let you know, I'll show you, we're gonna get an original ZF overhaul kit um, going to get a friction module, as they call it, uh, OE filter, going to get the body from Ericsson, is going to get the uh, open face bearing, as they call it, as I call it. I'm going to check the spray egg here. You're going to check the spray egg, and I'm going to check this. This is nice and tight here. But you can, we can also air check this to see how much it's leaking as well. But you know, this is this has no play in it. Most of the time, this is good. Uh, out of all the five HP twenty fours I did, this problem with these bushings, honestly, I've seen once. But overall, it's a it's a real nice transmission to work on. All right, so as these parts start rolling in, we'll uh, turn the camera back on. I'll give you a display of the parts and i um, going to get this thing built and back in the car. All right, so thanks for now, and I'll catch up with you guys uh, in a little while. All right, so the rebuild is going smooth for what I can do right now. Uh, I'm still waiting on the friction module, which is due in today. 
any lower front half of the valve body that I got from Ericsson's that is due in today. But I just wanted to show you what we have here so far. I was able to do the drums, put the drums together and stuff like that. I have my uh, ZF overhaul kit. I'll give you a close-up shot of this stuff. I have the uh, open face bearing in the race. Uh, I have my D, uh, I'm sorry, F clutch piston. Uh, new A drum and my filter. All right, so this filter was um, about a day out, and I guess when my supplier was uh, researching the part number, he uh, accidentally put the aftermarket one on my ticket, so they delivered one of these to me, which of course is getting returned because I have my original Filtran made in Germany filter here but um, kind of just wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison and and the price difference is uh, is unbelievable um, I also have my uh, F drum here and I just want to show you how easy the piston should go in when you use an original okay so in the bag uh, the part number of the piston I'll give you a close-up of this begins with a D and that usually means it's OE because I, I go for what I um, take it to mean as D would be dealer. And A, of course, at the beginning of the part number would be aftermarket. Uh, all right, I have the pump here. I just wanted to show you that I forgot uh, to knock the seal out. And we just got like a little washer in here. I wanted to show you and the, in the snap ring. Uh, that holds the front seal in. So it's going pretty well. Uh, I basically just have the, you know, the only thing I could do really is just have the drums done. So all the drums are built up, the planet set is together. I didn't want to put the pump together yet because I wanted to show you that. Um, but I'm doing everything in today, so I will be continuing on it today. So let me give you a close up. And uh, well, let me get a little closer and we'll just go over the parts that I have here now. Okay, so first here is my overhaul kit. All right, and there's really not much left of it because I have all the drums together. And there's a little chart there uh, so you can see what uh, packages are used for which drums and the sub kits. All right, and I still have valve body gasket, pump gasket, and pan gasket. And uh, this is the original ZF overhaul. Okay, here is the bearing. The bearing uh, fails a lot. There's also ZF. And this is the race, uh, where's my hub? Uh, yeah, the race. The race goes in here, so we gotta pop that race out and the bearing sits on top of the C drum here. So it's a very, very common failure. So everyone gets changed. All right, F clutch piston. Uh, this is original. When I got it in the, in the package, the partner begins with a D. So it's a D139967, and, and D means OE part. I figure, you know, D means dealer. So we're gonna actually install it into the F clutch drum. I just wanna show you how easy it goes in. All right, here is my A drum, new A drum. My old one is, is on the bench over there. Um, got it all ready to go. Skid the O-ring on here. Again, just waiting for the clutches. Uh, are we going to talk about the filters last? And the pump, I wanted to show you this. When you're not, you got to take the little snap ring out. Okay, here's the snap ring for the front seal. You knock the front seal out, then you have this little uh, spacer or, or splash guard or something that goes right in here, and then the seal goes in. Um, what I usually do is I kind of clean this up here. I'm going to um, uh, use like the wire wheel. I'm going to kind of sand a little bit to get it nice and smooth. And 
Seals go in a little tight, but I have a, uh, a press that I'm going to put, I'll put the seal on and I'll probably put a bushing driver on it and press it down so it goes in even and then use a smaller one to get it just below the snap ring groove and then put the snap ring on. I forgot to show that to you when we actually did the tear down. Okay, so there is my F drum. I'm going to put some grease here. See if I can bring it in a little closer. Okay. And just push it right down. I'll never forget that other one when he brought that to me in a clutch piston aftermarket and I couldn't get the piston in. So that's how easy they should go in. But you should only go only go OV with this stuff. Okay. So of course I'll be returning this filter. This is the aftermarket. It kind of just has an engineering number. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but I have my Filtran made in Germany on my OE filter, which I'll be using. And it's really something. Here's the two filters. Okay, this filter. I mean, I get, I get parts you know, I'm a shop, so I get parts at a at more of a wholesale price than a retail price. Okay, so this filter <coughs> costs me about fifty dollars. It actually should be a little more, but he he knocked a little off. The the my my price on this filter should be about sixty dollars, and the list is a um, little over a hundred. And this is the OE, okay? Filter and filter. This filter, which is an aftermarket, <clears throat> my cost on this thing is $4.32. And they're making money when they sell it. Suggested list price, $9 and like 56 cents for this. So it's a big difference between what I pay, you know, technically I should be paying again, um, but he always gives me a, a better price on it, a little over $60 for this list, a hundred and, uh, um, if I remember correctly, it was, it was probably around $110. And then this here, $4.32. So, and this one came in the bag, I gotta put it back in the bag. And this part number here, <clears throat> I know you probably really can't see it, but it begins with an A. So that is aftermarket. So we're going to put this back in here. And that's going back. So those are the parts that I have right now. Uh, the rest of the stuff should be in today. I know I got... Uh, I got a lot of transmissions on the way out. Um, I'll try to give you guys a shot of the other stuff. I don't know if I'll be able to, to be honest with you. So here is the, here is the new bearing. Okay, so this we put in. Uh, and then the bearing actually rides like that. All right. 
So I guess that is about it for now. Uh, just again waiting. That friction module was like uh, like two days out, three days out. Not sure where it was coming from. And the valve body is coming from Ericsson's, and I shipped also the converter to Ericsson's for rebuild. And that's it on this uh, O2 BMW with the ZF5HP24. Um, we did feel it slip on the pull away. It had the gear ratio codes. And I know one of them, we went over it in the beginning of the video, and one of them was 59 uh, stall modern, which means the computer sees a slip on the pull away. So we did find that O-ring torn, which would create a leak in the A-clutch circuit. So, as soon as the parts get here, we're going to continue. Actually, what I'm going to do now is just continue with the pump. Since I showed you guys the pump, I'm going to put the F-clutch together and uh, just wait on the rest of the stuff. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.